Did I break and then super glue together the yarn bowl that my sister bought me for Christmas? And just now realize that she's gonna find out because she's gonna watch this video and see that it was broken? Maybe. <laughs> Hey, what's up? I'm Emma, aka Midsummer Night Stream, and today you guys are going to follow along with me while I make a scrunchie. So in my last video, I talked a little bit about how I'm trying to use up stash, as well as not start additional projects because I've been feeling really overwhelmed with the amount of yarn and the amount of projects that I have going on right now. So with that being said, I'm not really counting this as a new work in progress because it's only going to take me a couple of hours to complete, and I'm doing it for this video. So please don't come at me for starting a new project. Another thing is that this is going to use up a bit of my stash, hopefully. So this is sort of working towards my end goal of cutting down on the amount of yarn I have and getting to a place where I feel a bit less overwhelmed. I'm also hoping this can act as a sort of mini tutorial for how to make a scrunchie. Uh, I'm using a free pattern called The Leftover Scrunchie by Jay Knits. And that's not my design, so I can't take credit for the pattern itself. I think most scrunchie patterns are pretty similar in their construction. So if you follow along with this tutorial and potentially get this pattern as well, which is free by the way, uh, it will be pretty straightforward for you to make a scrunchie as well. If you're a complete beginner, this might not be the right tutorial for you because I'm not going to show you simple things like how to knit or how to cast on. But if you are a knitter with a little bit of experience, as in the ability to knit, cast on, bind off, I think this will be a pretty doable tutorial for you as long as you get the pattern as well. So I'll link the pattern down below. I think there are other scrunchie patterns that are also similar, just in that all scrunchies are going to be constructed in the same way. So this is just my recommendation as in it's one that I've used before, but you can feel free to follow whatever pattern you have on hand. So this pattern calls for DK wet yarn and the leftovers I'm going to be using here, these are the leftovers from my side sleeve blast by the way, these are worsted wet yarn. So I'm going to cut down a little bit on the number of stitches to cast on. This pattern calls to cast on 90 stitches and I've also knit this pattern once before and I found that the scrunchie was a little bit bigger than I wanted. So I'm going to cast on maybe 70 or 75 stitches right now. Okay, so I cast on about 78 stitches just measuring this against my other scrunchie and making it a little bit smaller. And I think this is about a good amount, fingers crossed. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to join in the round. So this needle is a little bit too long to just knit all the way around the scrunchie. So I'm going to do a little trick that my mom taught me, which is that you can knit in the round on two circular needles. However, you can also do something called magic loop or you can use double pointed needles. So at this point, I'm going to join in the round and then we're just going to knit stockinette stitch for a couple of inches. Oh, and I forgot to mention that my tail has a bit of a long end, so I slightly overestimated the number, the amount of tail that I needed. But for this project as well, you actually don't even need to weave in ends. You can just stuff them on the inside of your scrunchie. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, she's in the round and I'm ready to knit. Another thing is to make sure you don't twist your cast on because I've done that before and it's really annoying. So just be careful when you're um, joining in the round to make sure that everything is straight and not twisted. Anyways, I was thinking this could be a little bit more of a chill knitting vlog where I just sit and talk to you guys for a little bit while I'm knitting. I haven't actually done a video where I'm actually making something at this point. Um, since I only have a couple of videos so far, they've all just been sitting and talking sort of videos. And in this video, I'm also going to be sitting and talking, but I thought it would be fun if I just did a little bit more of a vlog style where I'm knitting and talking to you guys. Lately, I've been watching Supernatural. I don't know if you guys have heard of that show, you probably have, but Supernatural is a show that I started watching way back in high school. So I think around ninth grade was when I really started getting into it. Oh no, I just started knitting with my end, that's annoying. But I watched several seasons in ninth grade or so when I was first sort of getting into the fandom. And then I was actually able to watch as the show was coming out. So if you guys have ever watched Supernatural before, you'll know it is a super long show. It has like 15 seasons. And back when I was in high school and was watching the show, I think it was on like season nine or 10 at that point. So I watched all the way up to season nine or 10 at that point, and then started watching the episodes as they were coming out. And it's really funny to me now because now as a 24 year old, I kind of randomly picked up rewatching the show so I was at home for Christmas and I was hanging out with my friend who I initially sort of watched the show with and we bonded over it in the first place. And I was like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if we rewatched the first episode of Supernatural? 
So we watched it and you know, I just got in this place where I was like, yeah, I kind of just want to keep watching this. It's a very chill show. I mean, it depends on your level of involvement with the show, I think, but for me at this point in my life, it's a very chill show for me to watch. I just like sort of know how things are going to end up. I've seen some spoilers about the show and you know, it's just like a nice show to have on the background that I'm not going to get too emotionally invested in. And that might be the opposite of many people's experiences. I think that was the opposite of my experience when I was watching in high school and I felt a lot more emotionally invested in the characters. But this time around, you know, I enjoy the show, I enjoy the characters, but it's sort of a show that I can have on and not worry about crying over, I guess. So I've been watching that and I'm all the way back to season 10, which is I think around where I stopped watching when I watched the first time around. So it's been kind of fun. I'm getting to a point where I actually don't remember what happened. Not that I remembered everything in the first place, but I definitely remembered some plot points. And I have, you know, like five more seasons of this show before I need to pick a new show to watch while I'm knitting. It's been a really nice show to be rewatching just because there's so many seasons of it. And I just know that I'm always gonna have something to put on in the background while I'm knitting. And that's not always the case. When I finish Supernatural, I don't really know what I'm gonna watch next. I do have a couple of shows on my list, but they're all kind of shows with like one season or something. So it's kind of nice to have just like a long running show that you can be watching. Maybe I'll rewatch Gilmore Girls after this. <laughs> It's about 11.45 at this point. I probably started this at 11.20 or so, just guesstimating at this point. And I'm on row three. I'm gonna try to time to see how long this takes me, just because the last scrunchie that I made probably took me three hours or so. And I don't know, I like to have a good idea of how long a project is gonna take, if it's just like a really quick project I can complete in a day. So I might have to go grab lunch at some point in the middle of this, but I'm hoping I can finish this in a couple of hours and have something to show for it. This is always a really fun knit because it's just so quick and easy. It's just plain knitting, so I don't have to be too stressed about anything. Like I mentioned in my last video, I've been having to frog a lot of projects lately. So having just like a really quick knit that I can complete, knowing there's really no risk of me having to frog, having the fit be wrong or anything like that, it's, it's really nice. And that is sort of also the appeal of my beekeeper's quilt. So, Making the tiny hexagons for that takes only about 45 minutes. They're really, really quick and easy to knit. It's just plain stock and net stitch in the round with a couple of increases and decreases. And, you know, I know there's never gonna be any risk of me really messing one up. I occasionally, you know, get the stitch count a little bit off. I really recently just had one where the stitch count was off by one, but that didn't even matter because it's so, such a small piece of a large blanket that, you know, having a stitch count off by one or two is not really gonna make a difference. So I just completed that hexagon and it was totally fine. And that is something where in another case, my perfectionism might kick in a little bit more, just in that if I messed something up and I knew it would be visible to me later on, I might be tempted to frog it. But with the hexagons and with the scrunchie, there just isn't as much need for perfection because they're so much simpler and there's not as much of a need for a perfect fit, especially with the scrunchie as well because everything is getting scrunched up. I'll quickly show this scrunchie that I made. Because everything is getting scrunched up, even if you make a small mistake, you're probably not going to see it in the end. I really like having these sort of quick and easy knitting project options that I know I can take on when things are getting tricky with my other products. to know what you guys have been knitting lately and how you've been feeling about it. I have been working on those three projects that I mentioned in my last video. I'm taking a little bit of a break from the 8 p.m. tank since as I mentioned I'm in a confusing spot with it where I feel like I should be frogging sometime soon but I feel like anytime I have to frog something I need to spend a little bit of brain power deciding do I need to frog this? Is this really what I want to do? What do I have to adjust in my next iteration so that I don't need to frog again? And so I tend to put off those projects while I sort of make the decision of if I want to frog or not. And so because I've been taking a little bit of a break from the 8 p.m. tank, I've mostly been working on my self-drafted purple tank that I showed in the last video, what I'm calling the groovy tank. And I've been making really good progress on that. So I did end up frogging that one and re-knitting the part that I was working on, which is sort of the bust area. And I'm really liking how it's coming out now. So I'm really excited about that. But one sort of struggle that I have with this is that 
I'd really like to put out a pattern for this tank top. And first of all, this is gonna be my first ever garment pattern, so I'm a little bit scared of the size grading. I think I'm gonna to have to try and find a tech editor and work with them to sort of figure out what the grading should be like, so that's going to be a new experience for me. But another thing is that this is a summery tank, and although I started on this project in February or March, as you guys know, I sort of put off working on it for quite a while. And so it's now August and I'm not done with my own version of the tank. And I have some more sort of design details to figure out. Even if I make good progress on this project and finish my own version of the tank in, you know, a couple of weeks, say mid to end of August, it's still a summer tank pattern. And I still need to write up the pattern, get pattern testers, put out the pattern, and all of that can't happen immediately. It's probably gonna take up a couple of months. So if I sort of do all of those steps, then I'm gonna be putting out the pattern in, you know, October or November. It won't really be the correct season for me to release the pattern. So I'm a little bit conflicted about that. I'm not sure what I should do, if maybe I should just sit on this pattern and release it next summer. Um, if I should maybe just release the pattern when I'm done with it and then maybe offer a sale on it next summer and say, you know, it's finally the season for this pattern, so you guys should go buy it. I don't really know what the right decision is here. I know I really should have just hustled a little bit more on this project and tried to get it done earlier in the summer or even in the spring since I started it so early in the year, but the truth is that I just avoided it because I was stuck on it and I didn't know what to do. And now I feel like it's too late in the year for me to release this pattern when I finish it. So let me know if you guys have any advice, especially if you're a designer. I know that putting out the pattern in the fall is probably not the best option, but I also really want to put it out when I complete the pattern, so I'm, I'm really conflicted about what to do. So let me know. So it's 12.15 and I just measured how much I have knit and it's almost an inch and a half. So this pattern calls for me to knit uh, to around three inches and I think I'm going to knit a little bit less. Like I mentioned, my last scrunchie that I made with this pattern, I think it came out like a little bit bigger than I wanted. So I just want something a little bit less puffy. And so I think I'm going to knit to more like two and a half inches and then bind off. Did I break and then super glue together the yarn bowl that my sister bought me for Christmas and just now realize that she's gonna find out because she's gonna watch this video and see that it was broken? Maybe. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, Liesl, I appreciate the gift, but I'm simply very clumsy. I swear I was careful with it. It's just, you know, it fell. Anyways, it's around 12.40 and I've watched an episode of and a half of Supernatural, so I'm probably gonna break for lunch soon but I'll be back after lunch, knit some more, and get some update updates for you guys. All right, it's 1.30. I took a little break for lunch, but I came back and knit a bit more, and now we're at about two and a half inches, so I'm gonna go ahead and bind this off. Like I mentioned, the pattern calls to knit to about eight centimeters, which is a little bit over three inches, but because this last scrunchie I made is a little bit puffier than I wanted, I think I'm just going to stop here at about two and a half inches. All right, I've now bound off my scrunchie, um, I cut the end of the yarn, so in the pattern kit recommends leaving about 16 inches of yarn to seam out the scrunchie, but in my experience I needed a bit more, maybe around like 30 inches, so I cut myself a good bit of slack this time. And again, because it's a scrunchie, there's a lot of empty space between the scrunchie itself and the hairband, so you can just stuff your ends inside, which is really nice because, you know, there's a lot of ends here that I want to weave in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start on the seaming process, and I'll show you guys how I do that. Okay. So I have my little scrunchy fabric here, and I also also have a hair tie. So I'm going to grab one of these hair ties, and I also recommend having something that you can stretch your scrunchy, scrunchy around that's going to be hard enough so that it doesn't collapse. So for me, I'm using this smaller hardcover book, and what we're going to do is we're going to turn the scrunchy inside out and put it around the book. And then you're going to take your hair tie. Again, this has to be a small enough object so that a hair tie could st stretch all the way around it. You're going to take the hair tie and also stretch that around the book and put it on top of the scrunchie. So 
One second, this is gonna take a little bit of focus. And make sure it is on top of the scrunchie all the way around. Okay, so now we're gonna start seaming. Let me find where my end is. Here we go. And at this point, we're going to fold this fabric together, this scrunchie fabric. And then this is what we're going to seam. So we're seaming these two edges together. Okay, I switched lenses, so hopefully you can see a bit better what's going on, sort of the close-up here. So as you can see, I've put the knitted scrunchie inside out and then placed the hair tie on top of it, completely stretched out. Now I'm going to give sort of a mini tutorial on how we're going to do this seaming process. So I actually found a tutorial from Pearl Soho that I thought was really helpful for understanding how to do the mattress seam. So I'm going to link that below just to give a more formal tutorial. But if anyone is interested in just learning from this video, I'm going to try my best to give a little tutorial. So first thing we're going to do is I have this end which is coming from the top of my fabric, which is where I bound off. And we're going to start seaming with the cast on edge right here. So you should start by taking your first stitch and you want to place your tapestry needle from back to front and pull it just through the center of that stitch. This is basically our setup step for what we're doing next. So next, we're going to go back to the cast off edge and put your tapestry needle under that first V that is formed in the fabric, like the first stitch. And we're just gonna pull that through. Then we'll go back to the cast on edge. And what you wanna do is you wanna put your needle back directly in where your needle came out the last time, which is sort of the center of the V of that first stitch. And then you want to go into the center of the V of the next stitch, which is basically forming this upside down V and you want to go through there. And basically after that, the process repeats itself. And what this is doing is it's going to form these new V's that look like stitches. So it looks like a seamless edge between the cast on and cast off edge. So again, we're gonna go into the V on the top edge, pull that through. Go back to the, ca the cast on edge and do an upside down V. And be careful not to get your yarn crossed. Right side up V on the top. And upside down V on the bottom. And again, this is not the most formal tutorial, so make sure to check out the tutorial I'm going to link below, and hopefully that will be more helpful. But basically, this is starting to form this pattern of just a relatively seamless edge. And I'm going to continue this all the way across the scrunchie. If you run out of yarn, you can just reattach more yarn and stick the ends on the inside like I mentioned. So not too big of a deal, but I did try and get enough of an end this time, so I don't need to attach more. I'm actually in disbelief that I had just enough yarn. I estimated perfectly because this is all that's left. Wow, I'm really proud of myself, honestly. All right, time for the big reveal though. I'm excited. All right, so we have the finished object. So I hope you guys like how this came out. I really love it. I think the modifications that I made to the pattern came out well. Uh, this is sort of like a good amount of puffy for a scrunchie for me. And as you can see, this is my previous version. So this one's a little bit just fluffier. It has a bit more fabric. And this one is a little bit tighter, but it's still recognizable as a scrunchie, and I think it looks good overall. Um, and it is around 2.25, so it did take me around three hours to make this, with a little bit of time subtracted for lunch. Which, yeah, I think that's a really quick, fun project. It also is just really stress-free knitting, as I mentioned before. You're not really worrying about, is this going to fit right? Did I mess up the stitches somewhere? It's pretty straightforward, and the mattress stitch actually is kind of soothing, although it always takes longer than I expect it to. And I was actually thinking while I was seaming this up 
It's actually my friend's birthday today, August 5th, the day that I'm filming this. So I think when I see her in a couple of days, I'm just gonna give this to her for her, her birthday. I hope she doesn't mind me trying it on for some clips. I don't think she will. But yeah, I think this is a really sweet gift idea just because it's relatively quick to make, but it's also something that if you give it to a friend, especially the kind of person who puts their hair up frequently, you know that it's going to get used as opposed to some other quick knit gifts like a hat, for example. I would sort of hesitate to give that to most of my friends because I don't think it would get used very frequently. So a scrunchie I think is a really great gift idea and it's just such a fun knit that I love it. I'm definitely gonna make some more of these for friends in the future just because it can be made in like a single afternoon. So if you have a friend's birthday party later that day or something, you can always make it at the last minute or you can make a few in advance and then just have them to give out to friends whenever. And I think that's such a smart idea. Anyways, I really enjoyed making this. I hope this tutorial slash chatty vlog sort of thing was useful and interesting to you guys. And thank you so much for watching. If you're still watching at this point, I'd really appreciate if you subscribed and give this video a thumbs up. I just hit 100 subscribers, which I'm really excited about. So thank you so much for watching and supporting me. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.